Welcome YouTube. This is a special video that my friend Keenan. Keenan, what's up? What is going on? So Keenan is on YouTube at the Geek Keenan, correct? That's right. So Keenan and I today are gonna do our top ten movies of twenty sixteen. We would have got this out earlier, except Amazon doesn't know how to pick up a package. What happened was is <laughs> I bought a microphone, microphone didn't work well, trouble getting it back trouble getting the one I'm using now which is the Blue Yeti so this is the first time I'm using it hopefully this sounds good enough so what we're gonna do is Keen and I are both gonna give um, sort of our honorable mentions first which is our like 11 through 15 and then we're gonna each gonna go and do about three of our top 10 each and then we're just gonna kind of talk about each film so Keenan I'll let you go first if you want do your honorable mentions yeah definitely uh, so uh, I, first off, I'd have to say one that not anyone really saw. It was called Eddie the Eagle. Mm. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. Oh, it has oh, uh, oh, Hugh yeah. Jackman in My it. My dad loves the movie. Still haven't seen it. It caught me by surprise, hands down. I kind of just put it in as I was like going to bed because I was like, uh, it seems like a chill movie to like watch going to bed. And uh, and then I ended up staying up until like three in the morning because I had to finish it. Uh, so that <laughs> one was really tough not to actually put in my top ten. So uh, first off, that would definitely be one for me. Yeah, so just a, a few more of them. Um, obviously, Hell or High Water didn't make my top ten list. Uh, still a movie I really enjoyed. It was a lot higher up there. And uh, surprisingly, a Michael Bay movie, um, 13 Hours. And just because I'm a big John Krasinski fan. And I actually thought it was a pretty decent movie. Um, so that was one and the other I could probably throw out there just as an honorable mention and then one other one i'd throw in there too just because i'm a, a huge horror fan is uh the conjuring 2 mm. I, I really enjoyed that and i thought it was better than the first one even though oh, really? i enjoyed the first one a lot um so that's another one i'd probably throw up there as that, an honorable mention that's my number 19 on, on my list of like oh really 40 films yeah right i have hush at 18 conjuring 2 at 19 and the shallows at 20 so three sort of mm -hmm. horror movies right yeah deadlocked. i still haven't seen hush but i've heard great things Dude, it's about on Netflix. it so. it's really yeah. good so my 20 through 11 i have the the shallows i really like this movie blake lively was really good it really caught me by surprise i thought it was just gonna be like they were gonna use her for sex appeal almost but right i really think that it it was it's not jaws or anything but it really it was really a suspenseful movie with um kind of the human spirit triumphing I guess. And then um, I yeah. had Conjuring 2, which is a really good movie. It, it, the Conjuring series is great. I, did, did James Wan make this one, or did he just produce it? I believe he did, actually. Okay. So James Wan continues his raid of killer movies, literally. And then I have 18, I have Hush, a really good movie that I just talked about. And then I got Star Trek Beyond to 17. And 16, I had Manchester by the Sea, um, Casey Affleck, really good movie. Really different movie it's not something i want to go back mm -hmm. and watch but that's not necessarily a negative then 15 we had right. hell, hell or high water really good movie i kind of want to watch it again because i was kind of tired the first time and that's never <laughs> a way to watch a movie 14 zootopia then 13 doctor strange doctor strange would have been top 10 if it wasn't for the humor that really put me off of it yeah it, a lot of it didn't work and then speaking of superhero movies we have 12 deadpool deadpool's a great movie number 11 for me i have the bvs ultimate edition um BVS regular is about way down on the list for me, but the Ultimate Edition really oh, did a lot to change it up, and it really made Lex Luthor a better villain, and it made Superman a more interesting, not even Superman, Clark Kent a more interesting character. Batman was mm -hmm. great as always, but we just got a lot more explanation. Um, okay, so Keenan, now why don't you give me your 10 through 6? Yeah, so uh, 10, ironically, is going to be 10 Cloverfield Lane for uh, me. Love it. I thought that would have been a little bit higher up on my list if um, the ending was a little bit different. Or just really, didn't have to be different, but just cut it off a little Tone bit sooner down. for me. Exactly. Uh, number 9 is going to be Batman vs. Superman, the ultimate um, edition, of course. Uh, not I thought regular. it was a great movie. Um, <laughs> Yeah, not the regular, unfortunately. Okay. Even though, like, uh, you know, the regular edition I thought was it's still okay. a fun movie. Just yeah, it had so many like, as a movie structurally, it didn't um, didn't really fit well for me. However, it had a lot of really just like epic and great moments that you know, of course, any comic book fan would love to just see on screen, which was really exciting to me. Like the first time seeing parademons on screen and things that was like cool. that. Uh, yeah, I have a little bit higher than you did. I think you said you had it at 11. Is that right? It is my 11. I just yeah, changed so. my number 10, 10 and 11. So. Perfect. Cool. So 
Um, and then if we move down to number eight, I have Zootopia up there. It kind of kind of stayed in that spot for me. Gotcha. Um, didn't move up or down. I liked Kubo and the Two Strings as well, but I think I did like uh, Zootopia a little bit more. And uh, yeah, I didn't want to throw too many animated movies in there. Um, so yeah, Zootopia really worked for me. Um, and it's one of the movies that I've watched a couple times this year, so that's kind of like uh, a huge factor in my top ten, just being able to rewatch the movie multiple times. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, that's where my number eight is. Number seven is um, something I'm pretty sure you probably don't have in your top ten. Uh, it's The Witch. I'm not sure if I haven't seen, seen it. The have Witch. Seen it? Uh, yeah, it's like a lot of my friends hated it's, it's it, very, but it's, I have uh, bad friends. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you really do have to love horror movies and different types of horror movies. You know, it's not one of those jump scare movies. I don't, I don't even think there was one part in there where there was a jump scare. Um, it's it's very slow paced to begin with, but the story overall is just it's just really uh, creepy and unsettling, mm-hmm. and it's probably one of my favorite endings to a movie all year long um it just was really creepy to me i don't i don't like the idea of witches it just creeps me out so so. (laughs) there's that that was uh number seven uh so number six we have uh or i have at least uh green room Mm, uh very dark movie yeah it's uh i think it's a little bit underrated this year honestly but i just don't um, think a lot of people saw it what's the problem yeah, it, i don't think anybody in my, disliked it from whatever you're exactly right in my area it showed for about a week and a half really um so i didn't even get to catch it in the movie theaters i saw it when it came out on blu-ray mm-hmm. and uh yeah it's just a, a kind of like a great thriller slash suspense horror movie um very well acted um it's slipping my mind uh professor x from x-men uh patrick stewart. Patrick stewart yeah uh does a really great job as playing kind of the villain in this movie spoiler um just kidding yeah it's a it's it's a super brutal movie to watch it's very dark um lots of kind of gore to mm-hmm. it and everything like that but um yeah i love that movie i think i have it a lot higher than most people would have it yeah that's uh so that'd be my top uh what is that 10 through 6 6 mm-hmm. through 10 10 through 6 uh, what do you have for your uh 10 through 6 or 6 through 10 <laughs> Okay, so my 10 through 6, starting off at number 10, I have Kubo in the two strings. Um, Keenan, have you seen this movie? Yeah, I have it on Blu-ray right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because you gave me the code. But um, I love this movie. I liked it when I saw it, but like the more I thought, think about it, the more I like it. And I just respect the art of stop animation so much. It's just such oh, yeah. a hard thing to do. And it mm-hmm. pisses me off because this movie did not make a lot of money. I don't mm. even think it made its budget back, which sucks because – um like a studios is doing a great job with uh Coraline and this Kubo like it just introduces this mythology and it was creepy at times and it was just a fun mm-hmm. movie the main character is great um Matthew McConaughey is amazing in it um mm-hmm. I think Charlie Theron was the was one yeah. of them right yeah that uh she was, she voiced, she was a monkey uh, right yeah she voiced the monkey um which was great. Like as soon as I heard her voice, I was like, "Who is that?" You know, it was like <laughs> bugging me. I had to Google it, but yeah, I think she did great in it. Yeah, and just it was just and just the character of Kubo. You know, something happens with him, and he just goes mm-hmm. on this journey, and it's just a great movie. It's beautiful takes, beautiful shots. Just the animation is incredible. And it's just a fun movie, and I really, really enjoyed it. And then my number nine was your number ten, and that is Ten Cloverfield Lane. I really, I've only seen this movie once, as with Kubo, and I love this movie. Mm-hmm. I saw it in theaters. The ending, I don't dislike it as much as some people do, but mm-hmm. it is dead, definitely a different tone shift than the rest of the movie is. But right. just like the suspense where you're kind of like, is John Goodman's character good? Is he bad? Uh, What's happened here? Why is there a bunker underground? Did he plan this? Mm-hmm. What is going on? Who is this guy that she's with? Can you trust him? Can you trust her? Like what? You just There's so many questions and then yeah. everything's answered and you're just – things just happen so quickly and you're like, wow, that's it was just such a good movie. Great acting. Really – I mean this was a three-actor movie. And rarely mm-hmm. does that ever happen slash work. And I just really respect that movie. J.J. Abrams helped make this movie. No one even knew it was happening till like, January, and it came out in March. So that was pretty mm-hmm. incredible, just not knowing the movie was going to come out. It's always nice when you kind of get a surprise. So, yeah. You're good. My number eight is The Jungle Book. I love The Jungle Book. I, I, I just think 
they couldn't have been done any better with Baloo and Mowgli and Shere Khan. It right. was just such a good movie, and you really feel for Mowgli. The one thing I didn't like, I had a very hard time um, with Christopher Walken. <laughs> okay, so King Louis was played by Christopher Walken, and that part kind of took me out of the movie just because I heard Chris Christopher Walken. Mm-hmm. But besides that, like, just the action, the fact that only one thing in this movie was pretty much real, and that was Mowgli, was incredible. The kid was acting against, um, I think his name is Neil, it's Neil something, ends with I. Um, and just, like, the relationship between him and Baloo was great. But it was just a really good movie, great music pieces, and just overall a really good movie. And then my number seven is a movie that I really, really enjoy, and that is Hacksaw Ridge, directed by the crazy Mel Gibson, starring Andrew Garfield. And I think, I haven't seen Silence yet, I don't think many people have, but Mm -hmm. besides that performance of Andrew Garfield, I think this is the best performance of the year from anyone. Keenan, have you seen Hacksaw Ridge? I have not, and that's why it's definitely not going to be my top ten uh, this and La La Land were two movies I did not get to see or haven't seen yet, so they're definitely not going to be in my top ten. <laughs> gotcha. But so for me, Hacksaw Ridge is just, it's such a good movie about a care, about a guy who, no matter what, would not drop his beliefs. He got court-martialed for it, almost imprisoned, and mm-hmm. Vince Vaughn was really good in this. He wasn't like a comedic idiot in this. He was a, like a drill sergeant, and he was very good. I'm, I was happy that he was in it, and he's kind of... Because, you know, the last 10 years, Vincent's mm-hmm. kind of been, like, all Bad right. Comedies. Just not, <laughs> like, just 2001 jokes, you know? Right. Exactly but right. This, How was, was uh, pretty good. He even had some humor in this, honestly. But, right. How was, um, what's his name, uh, Sam Worthington? Oh, he was, I mean, you know what you're going to get with him. He's kind of, like, a tough guy. <laughs> right. But he was right. all right. He wasn't in it a lot. Like, you you kind of don't like him in the movie just his character but oh really this, yeah but just andrew garfield was so good in this and it's just a story about just humanity and just it's just really good movie it, the first half there isn't any battle or anything really because you kind of just mm-hmm. are um taken through a journey with andrew garfield's character and then the second half is just a brutal war movie and this this guy saves like 70 lives on the battlefield without a gun it's just incredible, and this is a really good movie. And then for my last movie, my 10 through 6, I have Swiss Army Man. Can, have you seen that, that one? No, I haven't seen that one either. It's such a it weird, weird movie, but it's an amazing movie as well. It's like, I don't even know how to explain it. It's about a farting corpse that winds up on an island. A guy's about to kill himself, sees the farting corpse, then corpse, then uses the farting corpse as a boat to get back to California. Like it's so weird, but it's so also th- beautiful. Actually, so there's actually like it's just not a a weird movie where just weird things happen. Is there like an actual like linear story? No, you're kind of following. They they get to this forest and they're trying to find home, and it's just their journey and. and Daniel Radcliffe's character doesn't really understand anything. You don't really know what happened to him. But so yeah. um, Paul Dano's character. Paul Dano also did all the music, and it's it's really good. Like it's, it's really, really cool. good. Um, and just like he's trying to teach Daniel Radcliffe like this things about humanity, and you know, there's this thing where like there's just like a moment where Daniel Radcliffe's character is like, wait, why can't I, I do this? And then Paul Dano is just like, well, you're not allowed to in society. And he's like, but why? And then he doesn't really have an explanation, just sort mm-hmm. of like just little things. Like, I don't really know what else. To, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just a really good movie. Beautiful shots, great music, great acting. So Swiss Army Man is my number six. So just, so just to recap, I have Kubu in, in the two strings on uh, number 10, 10 Cloverfield Lane at number 9, Jungle Book at number 8, Hacksaw Ridge at number 7, and Swiss Army Man number 6. Okay, so Keenan, why don't you now tell me your 5 through 3, and then we'll both do our one through or our 2 through 1s back and forth. Perfect, awesome. So uh, number 5, and I, I might, just because I, I know how you are about Star Wars, I might have this a little bit lower than you do. Um, but it's Rogue One for me, and I, I really did love this movie. Uh, obviously, so my number five. Uh, I didn't like it as much as I liked uh, The Force Awakens. Um, How many times have you seen it? I've seen it twice in theaters. Okay. okay. 
Um, so I enjoyed it both times. Um, I can definitely see like it, it does have some of those kind of Gareth Edwards vibes to it where there are some times where things kind of drag on a little bit long, but then the action or the, you know, the things that you really want to see are super epic. Um, and I hate to just kind of like piggyback off what everybody says, but the third act of this movie is like perfect. Um, yeah, I, I have no some of the best about stuff this. ever. <laughs> exactly. Um, so that was really great. Um, the only thing that keep me from keeping it higher is that um, I myself didn't really feel anything um, about the characters. I, I don't want to go into spoiler territory, yeah. but um, let's say if a character were to die, I did not really feel anything, um, and I felt like I should have. Um, I mean, but other people, than that, third act pe- was people do die in this movie. That's not a spoiler, but just don't yeah. I, I feel like anyone who's ever been on the internet in the last month knows that by now yeah um but yeah uh yeah people die in the movie um some characters do and i didn't really feel like sad or anything like that um but man that uh that last like what three minutes of the movie you'd say um probably the best thing i've seen on film all year long like the the one thing Probably either the best thing or the second best thing that I've seen on film this year. Yeah, it, um, it's, and then it's pretty incredible. Going at number, yeah, definitely. Um, and uh, going in at number four, I have um, this is probably not even on your top ten, but Nocturnal Animals. Ooh, and very yeah, low for me, it's twenty twenty two for me. It's tough for me because I I do like kind of weird movies. Um, I I thought this movie was a little bit weird um but i'm a huge jake gyllenhaal fan i love his acting style I huge is an understatement everything. yeah so <laughs> it's um it's it's like unhealthy how much i like him. like <laughs> i'll like give him the benefit like of Ryan the doubt. exactly like he can be in a he can star in a teletubbies movie tomorrow <laughs> and i'll probably pay to see it critically acclaimed uh, yeah so um that's kind of where i'm at with that i like the movie and uh Amy Adams, man, she uh, she kills it. She's killed it all year long. She's been in great movies this year, so that's kind of where I'm at with my number four movie. And then number three, and I did not think this was going to ch- change all year long, but it's Captain America: Civil War. Hey, um, we have a I thought for sure it was going to be at my number one, right? And uh, yeah, I mean, there's not really much I could say about this. I mean, it has everything that you want as a comic book fan, and it executed everything perfectly. Um, like the introduction to Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Spidey Man, um, yeah, I, and actually, you know, even I, I would say I'm just equally as excited about the Black Panther movie as I am the Spider-Man movie now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Chadwick much talent Bozeman. involved. Yes, Michael so B. Jordan, great. Ryan Coogler, Lupita exactly. Nyong'o, and that like that introduction to his character and in a way his origin story. Um, Really got me excited for, you know, just a lot of future Marvel films and everything like that, especially Black Panther and Spider-Man. Um, so that was really cool. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a perfect comic book movie to me. So, um, yeah, the next two are, are a little bit higher. And I have <laughs> specific reasons why. But, yeah, that's uh, that's my five through three. What do you have? Gotcha. And those are all good choices. Um, my five through three, number five, I have Arrival. And Arrival is just... Like, I, some people don't like it because they think it's a little bit slow, but I don't think that at all. I think it builds up and builds up and builds up on the way that it ends, kind of changes the whole film, mm-hmm. and then the next time you watch it, which I've only seen it once, but the next time you're, I'm going to watch it, I'm going to see things differently, and just the performances between Amy Adams and our Jamie Renner was amazing in it. He plays a big role. Forrest Whitaker was oh, really yeah. good. Forrest Whitaker was better in this than Rogue One, to be honest. It was weird in Rogue One. Oh, yeah. Um, Jin! But, um... <laughs> <laughs> but just like the cinematography in this, speaking of Star Wars, the cinema, the c- cinematographer of this is doing the Han Solo movie. So that bears very well for the Han Solo movie. Really Cause this was a beautiful movie with only like one location, honestly, like one or two locations, mm-hmm. but it was still a breathtaking movie, but it was just a great movie. Um, my one through five were pretty much almost all tied for me, but mm-hmm. this movie, I think the uh, rewatchability factor isn't as high as my mm-hmm. top four so that's probably why it's not um a little bit higher it was my n- number three then two other movies came out and it was like my number five so 
speaking of Ryan Gosling, Nice Guys is my number four. Great yeah. movie. I saw it on a plane, and I was like, this is, I don't like this that much. And then I saw it in college with, with my roommate, and then I was like, what the hell was I doing? Like, it's such a good movie, you know, just <laughs> like that scene. I think we were talking about this, that scene when Ryan Gosling finds a dead body. And he's like, I, come on. It is God, the best I, thing I ever. Talk. And he like can't talk. I mean, he's just he's just like making like high he's just screeching over. sounds. <laughs> he Sorry. can't breathe. And then you know the part when he gets his arm broken. He's like, no, no, like doesn't oh want Russell Crowe to break it's his screech. arm. It's so good. It's so good. Um, and it's just a really good movie. It's this is a movie that people don't make anymore. Similar mm-hmm. to another movie he's in in my list. Um, it's just great. It was just a great movie, great dynamic between Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling. Like, Ryan Gosling's a god, but like it's just so good. Oh, yeah. And his daughter was phenomenal in this, and she's mm-hmm. in Spider-Man: Homecoming. I noticed her in the trailer. I'm excited for that. Um, what? I said I'm excited for that. Oh her yeah. Being in- yeah. So Nice Guys was perfect. It was Shane Black really, really did this one well. It's, um, okay, so <laughs> and then my number third, my number three, my number third is the same movie as Keenan as that he has as. An, uh, number three, and that is Captain America: Civil War. And the airport scene was mm-hmm. great and everything, but the final battle, the final you know act, was even better. And that's where I think this movie triumphs. And it, it's a character piece instead of an action piece. The dynamics between Captain America and Tony Stark—you have yourself flip flopping back and forth. Who am I going to root for? Blah 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 mm-hmm. blah blah. Um, and it's just a really good movie with a really good directors and really good action scenes and great dialogue and great characters. Every yeah. character got their moment. Okay, so that was my five through three. Just to recap, I got a rival at five, nice guys at four, and Civil War at three. All right, Keenan, give me your number two, and then I'll do my number two. Yeah, number two is Arrival. Um, ah. yeah, I could really just pay you back off what you said. I, I thought it was a perfect movie. I actually didn't have really any problems at all with um, the pace of the movie. I didn't think it was too slow, um, just because the the whole time I'm just kind of thinking you know there was never really a point in time um, where I was just kind of like zoning out or anything like that I'm thinking about the movie even though I could see how somebody else would say it's slow I was just thinking about the movie and like trying to put everything together I was trying to figure out like what aliens are there for everything like that like if I had like the smallest bit of flaw and I think it is a flawless movie but if I had to find something it's it's so like nitpicky but it was like the cgi like near the end with amy adams when she went into their like i don't know in their ship or whatever it looks so weird to me um maybe it's just like the screen i was seeing it on i'm not sure but Mm. yeah that's that's really it i thought it was a perfect movie i love amy adams now i mean like i think she was in some really good movies this year but yeah and like a right she was good in nocturnal animals too i think arrival was her better performance though oh yeah yeah, so, and okay, and then my number two, you guys might be surprised that this isn't my number one, and that is Suicide Squad, just kidding, that is Rogue One, a Star <laughs> Wars story, never would it be a Suicide Squad, okay, so Rogue One, a Star Wars story is everything it said it was going to be, it's a war movie, um, Darth Vader is in it, and if, I really wish there was a camera on me in the movie theater, because I was li- almost in tears, I was like, oh my god, um just and then there's something that happens in the end with him it's just like <laughs> did you not like have that in the last part the last the last darth vader you see in the movie and then you hear like the score behind it are you not just like smiling the whole time dude i, I wanted was, people I to like, die like i'm like, like vader I was do your thing <laughs> oh. i was walking out just like cheesing the whole time like all the way to my car because like i had like it that just stuck in my brain the rest of the day yeah it's it's so good and then the new characters um i actually just bought a black series figure of k2so the um sassy droid as i like to call and just the characters (laughs) i mean k2so is my favorite turret or as or as my sister calls him churro is also one of my favorite (laughs) characters just i am one with the force and the force is with me bay's a great character jen and cassian are great characters i think one negative is and people have said this for their negatives is kind of character development Yet, I think mm-hmm. this movie said we want the goal to be more important than the characters, and they definitely achieved that. Mm-hmm. They had, The goal was so grand in scale, and it made sense. And I've been calling this movie Star Wars Episode 3.9 because it really relates mm-hmm. to um, A New Hope so well, and it ties so well together. And I think it changed a lot, too. Like, 
Oh, I mean, obviously, if you grew like, up with a new hope, like when that first came out, I would imagine seeing this would change a lot for you. Well, and like, some of the flaws in a new hope are kind of made like yeah, they're, they're um, strengths in this now. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then just um, Krennic, I thought was a brilliant villain, mainly because I've read Catalyst and I think he's great in that. Um, honestly, it pisses me off when people think that the CGI on Tarkin was bad. Because I really <laughs> thought he was my he was honestly one of my favorite parts of the movie. And then just I mean what they did with the characters took balls, and I'm not gonna say what happened, but um, it just did. And some I guess some negatives I have. Saw Guerrera, the character wasn't bad. It was just I hate to say it, but Forrest Whitaker's portrayal of it, he was like, Jin, <laughs> my child, come, we have a long way to go. And then like everything was, was, was kind of comedic. It was so Shakespearean almost, just like. Like he yeah. was in his own world, and I guess I could say you could say that because of like the war he's been through and all the stuff. And he's actually going to be in Star Wars Rebels season three premiering, season, the second part of season three premiering. What's today? Wednesday on Saturday. So if you guys want to check that out, and he's being voiced by Forrest Whitaker, which is cool. Mm -hmm. But I think he was kind of just not what I thought that he would be. Hair. He wasn't. He wasn't the symbol of hope that I thought he would be. Overall, I really love this movie. I I don't know if I like it more than The Force Awakens. I don't. What I've been telling people is, I said I have to wait a year. I, I literally have to wait a year for the hype to die down and everything to analyze it really just as a film and not as an event. Right. So, mm -hmm. true. Yeah. So Rogue One is my number two. All right, and then Keenan and I are both going to say our number one. So I'll let Keenan go first. What's your number one movie of twenty seven, twenty sixteen? Bearing you haven't seen all of them, just from what you've seen. Heck yeah! So the Nice Guys is my number one. Yeah, and, boy. and it's got that. Yeah, it's got that rewatchability for me because I've me already too. seen it three times. Yeah, me too. So I, I really love it. And freaking Ryan Gosling is the the best. Um, he was my favorite actor of this year. Um, and I think that's really And you haven't even seen what he's been best in. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, and, you, you know, kind of just like talk. I don't know if you remember it, but the, the elevator scene when they, they, like, go up the elevator and they, like, peek their heads out and they see, like, guys oh, getting the, shot the guys stuff. the guys falling yes and mean? then they like go back into the elevator and you can like ryan gosling's just kind of like shaking <laughs> <laughs> and like i'm not sure fear he was just like he was supposed to be this, this like detective whatever his daughter's PI, like you, his daughter's and, like uh, you're the like, worst detective he's, I've ever seen he's a wimp <laughs> and like i was like dying when he uh another just another scene that um was funny to me is when he it was at the beginning he uh tried to break into some like building. <laughs> And he, sh he like cut his wrist or whatever. Uh. He's like, Ooh. and he like falls down. Then the then doctors like, were like, "Don't die anymore. on us! Don't die on us!" And he was like <laughs> looking like, around like all oozy and stuff. He was so good in that movie. It was just like, <laughs> I love. It. I have to watch that tonight now. Just thinking about it, but it, it just doesn't get old for me. And whenever like somebody wants to watch a movie or somebody comes over to my house, like that is like the first movie that. And I suggest because it doesn't take a lot out of you, but you get a lot of good laughs, and you know it's a surprising movie to watch. So I got it for five uh, bucks on Blu-ray on Black Friday. Y yeah, dude, you got a good deal for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's um, easily my number one. What do you have? Okay, my number one is also a Ryan Gosling movie, and that is La La Land. I can't I shut can. up about this movie. I love this movie. I've watched so many interviews with the cast and with. Um, director Damien Chazelle, who also did Whiplash, and I'm mm -hmm. kind of in awe of, because he's 31 years old, and he has directed two of the best movies of the 2010s, My and man. that's insane. And this movie, like... Okay, so I'm not a big musical guy. I don't think a lot of people this day and age are. Mm -hmm. But the, mm -hmm. what I've been telling this, these people, what I've been telling people who are kind of thrown off by the musical element is there's a, there's musicals that have a story in it, but overall they're, they're musicals, right? Right. This is a movie that incorporates music, and by definition, it's a musical, but it's a film. It's a film that has right. musical sets, and it works so perfectly. And it's such a good movie in terms of the realistic element of it, the challenges of Hollywood, how good of an actor you can be. There's a scene with Emma Stone in the trailers where she's give, like crying in this in – this, um, she's doing an uh, – 
an audition and she's crying at it and then someone just walks in on their phone and then like she has to cut the scene and then they just have her leave like it's just the harsh realities of hollywood and right. what happens when you try to balance your work in hollywood with your with your relationship with, with your dreams and when those things collide what happens to you what happens to you as a person the cinematography is so good the scenes are so good ryan gosling and emma stone delivered one of the best songs of the year it's called city of stars it's such a good mm-hmm. song the dancing is so good um the characters are just you love these characters you want them to succeed so much and it's just like it's such a good movie and like the the rare the, movie it's yeah and like it it has such a good rewatchability i've only seen it once because i'm cheap and don't want to go waste money not waste money <laughs> but pay money again um but like it's such a good movie just Emma Stone is really, really good. I have a hard time between her and Amy Adams for Actress of the Year, but I'd give it to Emma Stone for this. She's just so good. And Ryan Gosling, oh, like, it's so good. And the ending just murders your soul. (laughs) Not going to spoil it, but it's just (laughs) tears were shed. And it's not like the notebook (laughs) or anything, but it's just realistic and you know, this Ryan Gosling's character loves jazz. In in 2016, no one loves jazz really, except for him. No. And he's trying to like teach Emma Stone why jazz is such an amazing genre of music and how it's just it flows and it it so it's just so good. Let me ask you: Does it like? Because after seeing Whiplash, I was like, man, jazz is so cool. Does it have that kind of like um, effect on oh, you yeah. after seeing that? Yeah, that's cool. But I wouldn't even call Whiplash like as much j- like this is pure 1950s Louisiana jazz. Right. Okay. And but Whiplash is great too in great music and just Love like it. I've been watching so many interviews with Damien Chazelle and the cast and like this movie Damien Chazelle wrote it in like 2009 and he couldn't get it made. No one would buy it. No one would um buy the script of this would make this movie i think lighthouse studios or bright something made this movie right. and like it's gonna win movie of the year it's i i don't know what else could win movie of the year honestly like it's so good and obviously it's not for everyone just because it has musical aspects to it but right like, there is the not lovers, yeah say. and i oh. didn't normally i have to go to the bathroom like like once or twice in the movie i didn't leave once for this i left twice for star wars like just because i had to, it's gonna be in my <laughs> yeah, mind same. if i don't and like i just can't shut about this movie i've been listening to the soundtrack every day didn't you like, buy like a keyboard or something after seeing oh no movie? i didn't buy it i already had one oh, but like okay, yeah cool. now i started playing keyboard because <laughs> ryan gosling does it <laughs> sebastian does it in the movie and it's i can't stop talking about it so those are our top 10 movies of 2016 that we have seen obviously there's a bunch of movies we haven't seen um yeah so let us know down in the comment section what your guys' top 10 movies of 2016 were what were some underrated movies you guys thought really should have got some more recognition or even overrated movies <laughs> so um <laughs> let us know you know what you thought of this if you want more kind of top 10 videos on things and um, my name is Trey Mitchell you can obviously find me on this channel where you are now I do Star Wars videos reaction videos I did one today on the Star Wars um, Rebel Season 3 mid-season trailer. I do two podcasts, um, Star Wars podcast called Force Talk, Hero podcast called Hero Talk, and I'm going to be doing my podcast more regularly now because I got this microphone that you're hearing my voice on also. So, and then I'm also here with Keenan Stroop. How do you pronounce your last name? Stroop, yeah. Stroop? Just... Keenan Stroop? Okay, so I'm, <laughs> I'm here with Keenan, and Keenan, right. where, where can people find you on the various social medias? Heck, yeah. So my main thing uh, that I do is obviously YouTube. Um, so you can find me uh, at the Geek Keenan. I uh, do uh, movie-related things, nerd, geek-related things, uh, big Blu-ray collector. You um, can also find me on Twitter at the Geek Keenan and Instagram. Uh, no geek or no the, but just Geek Keenan. Geek Keenan. Alrighty. So that is it for this video. Um, we're signing off. Thank you for watching and. Mm -hmm. Go watch some more movies.